Hello! Sometimes you need a picture for a shot, and sometimes it's not ready. Maybe you don't have it printed out. Maybe you don't even have the picture yet. Maybe you don't even have a printer. And you need to shoot the shot right now because that's where the actors are and you need their hands because... <laughs> oh no. Well, that's when the CG comes in to your rescue and saves you. Look at that. Okay, so here's how to do that in Blender. So, with my footage loaded into Blender's movie clip editor, I'm going to go to my tracking settings, check normalize, and I'm gonna set my motion model to location rotation scale, and I'm just gonna go ahead and track all these little markers on the paper. In hindsight, I probably should have tracked the corners of the paper as well, because it does some shaking, and it's got a little bit of slipping in the end result, so I would do that in the future. But hey, now you got a bunch of tracks. With all the trackers selected, over in the side panel, go down to solve, and under plane track, click create plane track. Now just using the G, R, and S hotkeys, grab, rotate, and scale your little box around until it matches up to where the picture should be. Cool. Now switch from tracking mode to masking mode and add in a new mask here. To add in handles, hold control and click and drag your mouse and just cut out the outline of the paper. I used the mask to cut out the thumb, but we'll do that in a little bit more detail later. So you can just go along the edge of the paper overlapping the thumb. Now don't worry if your mask isn't perfect, we're going to use some ninja compositing tricks to help it out in a minute. Hit Alt-C to close off the circle of your mask, and then hit A to select all. With everything selected, shift and select the little plane track that you created, and then hit Control p and that will parent your mask to the plane track. Which is super cool, because then you can play it back, and it looks fantastic. Okay. On to compositing. We're going to need a movie clip node, and the node that's going to do most of the heavy lifting is this plane track deform node. I'm going to put in the movie clip we used, the camera, the plane track, and check motion blur, and also going to throw in an alpha and over node, and feed the plane track into the bottom slot, and the movie clip into the top slot. And <laughs> if you feed the movie clip back into the image on the plane track deform, you can get inception, which is pretty cool. But we're going to use the image that we want to track in, Looks like the aspect ratio is off, so I'm going to go into the distort menu, get a scale node, and change that up. I'm also going to make it black and white, and then just put in some RGB curves so I can adjust the brightness. Cool. Now I'm going to work on the mask. Let's drop in a color ramp to the original footage. Just crank up those values so we get a nice, really contrasty image. Normally when people do this kind of thing and they know they have to replace an image, they'll use a green image so they can green screen it out. But I happen to get pretty lucky here. The background is dark and the foreground is bright. Okay, Shift A, Input, Mask Node. Also going to add in a Mix Node and set that to Add. And then when you add the Mask Node to that, it makes the tracking markers go away because it just puts the mask right on top. If we check the clamp checkbox, that should work a little bit better there. Let's also go into filter and add in a dilate erode. Then set that somewhere negative, like 25. That way it kind of shrinks and it leaves space for the mask on the edges. Now let's flip it around and do the opposite. So we're going to duplicate the add node. I'm going to set that to multiply and then I'm going to feed the mask in. And instead of making it smaller, let's make this bigger so that the black part is also away from our edges. And now if we view the multiply, you can see we have a nice detailed edge there. Then if we plug the output from our multiply into the alpha over factor input, hey, that could use a little work. Let's grab a transform node from the distort menu. And I'm just going to nudge this picture around until it looks like it's a little bit better lined up. Now remember how I said we're going to fix the thumb later? This is fixing the thumb. Just tracking a piece of it, and making a mask, and parenting the mask to the tracking marker with Control p Okay, now back in compositing, I'm going to steal the mask node from the top. Let's check motion blur first though, and duplicate it, move it down to our image that we're trying to paste on top. And this is going to be our shadow, so I'm going to put the mask through an invert node. I guess we should make sure the mask is actually the thumb mask and not the picture mask. Then I'm going to put it through a dilate erode node, make that a little bit bigger, then through a blur node, I'm going to blur that around 40 on the X and Y. And then that goes into a multiply node. And if we turn this up a little bit, you can see we've got a nice shadow of our thumb going on. Now if we go to our final alpha over, you can see the thumb is a little bit messed up now. And so to fix this, I'm just going to grab our mask of the thumb with the invert node. Let's see if we can move these to the mask, drop in a mix node, and set that to multiply, and put the invert right in there. And let's take a look and see. There we go. The thumb is cut out of the mask, and in the final result, it's looking pretty decent. 
and we've got our own little thumb shadow. One more thing in the node tree of that mask, if we just add in another dilate erode after the multiply before the thumb removal <laughs> multiply, and just make that a little bit bigger, then our image will cover up the edges a little bit better. Okay, so improvements. What can I do better next time? Well, like I mentioned before, I would track the edges of the piece of paper so that it sticks to those a little bit better. If you look at the corners, you can kind of see the image slipping a little bit. Another obvious thing that you might have noticed at this point is that when it gets close to the other piece of paper, the mask gets a little bit confused, and so it tries to put the image on the other piece of paper as well. And so if I were retaking this footage, I'd probably just use one piece of paper, but yeah, that's what I'd do to improve it, make it a little bit better. So. If you've made it this far, I'd like to give you a gift. If you're a visual effects artist or a blender artist, and you have difficulty sometimes adding some life to your shots, I've created this pack of seamless looping smoke elements for you, and I find this super useful if I need to drop in some chimneys or smokestacks or anything like that. Like I mentioned, these are completely free. They're my gift to you. And if you want to pick this pack up, there's a link in the description. Okay, have a good day.